My name is Ivana Ekisoy, and I'm the mayor of Freetown, the capital city of Sierra Leone. The biggest challenges that we face in our city, um, in my view, have a single root, and that's the rapid rate of rural urban migration. A recent World Bank study indicated that the population growth is in the region of 4.2% per annum. Very alarming when you put that alongside a lack of planning of the city, which means investments in infrastructure, in sanitation, in education, in job creation um, have not kept pace with the growth. And significantly, the growth has resulted in deforestation, in the destruction of mangroves, and the biodiversity of the city has affected the water table levels and therefore the availability of water because the growth did not come into an environment in which there was city planning, town planning, and management of environmental resources. The solution the Transform Free Town is offering is a multi-sectoral, integrated approach to, the, to these urban challenges. The Transform Free Town focuses on four clusters, resilience, human development, healthy city and urban mobility. Within those four clusters are 11 priority sectors. So if we ask the question, how do we involve community in Transform Freetown? It is through this process. As soon as I came into office, we'd already started a process of speaking to, engaging in focus groups, 15,000 of our residents, and that was our bottom up. But bottom up, in my view, and I think in our experience, is not sufficient. You also need a strategic input, the long-term view, that comes from technical expertise being overlaid on the bottom up. The groups of people who were uh, engaged, the private sector, the public sector, and community organizations, formed these sector working groups. We brought research to the table, and we went through a very clear process of identifying the problem statement. We recognize, as every city leader does, that we can't solve all the problems all at once. But our question was, what was the things, what were the things we could do that would have the largest impact, the biggest impact, that would move the needle? So we articulated our problem statement for each of those 11 priority sectors, and then we identified our targets. So those 19 targets were articulated through a consultative process. And going beyond that, the implementation of those 37 in initiatives is really being driven by, once again, a collaboration of parties across our sectors. So that's how we are responding, that's how we're bringing on board those who are within our population. Here in Sierra Leone, we have 22 local councils. Seven of them are municipalities, cities with mayors. The remainder are districts with um, district chairmen. And we come together in an organization that's the Local Council Association of Sierra Leone. So that gives us a platform for sharing information, for supporting each other, for acting as a lobby, um, in respect of our engagement with the central government. In Freetown, or in Sierra Leone generally, our mandates are governed by the Local Government Act of 2004. And for many years, um, that act wasn't operationalized, um, specifically not in respect of local council urban planning responsibilities. On the 7th of March 2019, the current administration gave a press release, issued a press release in which they specifically said building permits, land use planning, strategic, uh, um, local area, strategic land planning and local area plans would as functions be devolved to cities, all the local authorities for that matter, which is fantastic news. Um, sadly, we have yet to see the operationalization of this. Um, there have been challenges, um, particularly from the Ministry of Lands, uh, but we, there is an ongoing process which we are hopeful will conclude within the coming weeks, which will enable Freetown City Council, which is the largest municipality in the country with a population of 1.2 million people, to act on that mandate. Our engagement with other cities in the region um, happens formally through UCLG, United Cities and Local Governments, um, but informally many of us as mayors um, engage one another when we meet at meetings and bounce ideas off each other. I've been in touch with the mayor of Accra, the mayor of Monrovia, the mayor of Kenifig, 
Um, so these relationships are formal and informal, and they're very beneficial. The, the other uh, um, platforms, sometimes not Africa specific, like C40 Cities, um, where I'm in that group with a number of African mayors or mayors of African cities, um, and other uh, other organizations such as the Mayor's Migration Council, where um, I'm on the leadership board with the mayor of Kampala. So, so when it comes to the information sharing, it's formal and it's informal. My first would be, be inclusive. It's so important to hear from our residents, um, but also to ensure that the voices that we hear are multidimensional. My second recommendation would be the importance, really, of ensuring that there's clarity in mandates and that at the local level there is a commitment from our perspective to ensure that we deliver services to the best of our ability to our residents. But really our mandate is best delivered when we have the space to plan our cities um, and to do so in a manner which takes into consideration the challenges of today but also the challenges of tomorrow. And that can't be concluded without making mention of climate change and the need for urban plans today to res reflect the importance of climate adaptation and climate mitigation. Thank you.